Hello, Internet, and welcome to Blackburn Rover Seas, the multi-episode podcast, vlog, blog, whatever you want to call it, about the trials and tribulations of Blackburn Rovers. Each episode will preview, review, and summarize every Blackburn Rovers game from the kickoff to the final whistle. But this is an unusual, the unusual perspective we have on the show here is that I'm actually based in the United States, so catching a Blackburn Rovers game is quite tricky. So, uh, and uh, on, uh, on the other on the other side of the, the other side of the coin, every Premiership game is shown live over here, which is uh, you know, a nightmare for a Rovers fan because we're not in the we're not in the Premiership, so I can't really enjoy Blackburn to its uh, uh, you know in all its glory. Uh, but anyway, enough jibber jabber. For all intents and purposes, you can call me DC, so let's get on with the show. Here comes the news! After a busy week of football for Rovers, some good, some bad, our beloved Blue and White have seen many links to a few more players this week. The likes of Joby McEnough, Steve May and Chris Eagles have all been quoted as potential transfers. Uh, currently, Blackburn Rovers have 22 established players in their squad, which is uh, under the current transfer embargo rulings, means we have two more vacant spots available to, uh, to uh, pursue. Uh, and I'm sure Gary Bowie is going to, you know, go out and get those two extra bodies because we need competition all around. That's my understanding that GB has a bit more flexibility in regards to these last two transfers. As if, as if he in, intends to use the two remaining spots for free transfers, they can be completed after the transfer deadline. However, if I am wrong, please correct me. However, that does not address the fact that our current players are in still in the shop window and are not safe from any potential bidders. So, like Jordan Rose, Grant Hanley, Ben Marshall, they've all been linked to uh, moves outside the club. Let's just um, you know keep our fingers crossed that uh, that does not happen. Let me scoot over here a little bit. So, who would you like to see being drafted into the Rover squad? For me, I think um, our current attacking options are pretty good. I feel the signings of Barrow on loan has replaced Josh King and Delfonso and Coita up front have been pretty decent so far. However, it's at the back that I still feel we're very vulnerable and I'd like to see an experienced head as well as a promising youngster on loan. Perhaps that young Henry fella from uh, West Ham could come back as he was pretty decent last season in his one or two games that he had. Here comes the reviews! Well, after our opening shambolic week, one league defeat as well as exit from uh, the League Cup, Attention focused to our first away game of the season, and off to Huddersfield we went to kick off our away campaign. Team GB started with Raya in goal, Henley, Hanley, Duffy and Olsen at the back, with uh, Jason Lowe, Guffrey, Barrow, Marshall and Conway across the midfield with Jordan Rhodes, the lone striker. As kickoff approach it approached, I was ultimately optimistic, however that op- optimism soon vanished when Huddersfield took the lead through that pesky Naki Wells, he always seems to find the back of the net. Um, for Huddersfield, it, it seems to be a good sign for them. I think they brought him in at the time when, uh, you know, as a replacement for Jordan Rhodes, and he's, he's, he's not a bad, not a bad striker. But anyway, things got worse for Rovers as Jordan Rhodes was taken off shortly after half time with an injury, and he was replaced by the uh, new tra- free transfer, Coita. Um, our blushes were spared, another defeat thanks to free transfer Nathan Delfonso. He scored his second goal in a week. Delfonso scored within 60 seconds, coming on off, off from the bench on the 60th minute. Uh, we could have lost it in the end, so a point is probably a fair result, so uh, a 1-1 result there. If you missed the game just like me, click on the video at the bottom of half of the screen for highlights that are kindly provided by One Rovers, the official YouTube site from Blackburn Rovers. Here comes the previews! Now the game's come thick and fast in the championship, so next up we have Cardiff back at Ewood on the 18th of August, followed by our next away fixture against Brighton on the 22nd of August. Now due to the close proximity of these games, I'll pre- Review both this week and review them the following week. So Cardiff, I'm going to make this brief. So f- so far, the players that have stood out for me have been Raya in goal, Barrow, Coita, Delfonso. And seeing as this is a home game, I'd like to see Team GB going all guns blazing uh, and and going for an attacking lineup. So here's here's what I would pick if I, I was the man in charge. It would be Raya in between the sticks. He hasn't had a clean sheet yet, but he's um, yeah been pretty decent so far. I'm going to change my back four somewhat by pushing Ben Marshall into right back, Hanley, Kilgallen as my centre backs, with Olsen at the left back. Into midfield, I've gone for a four man midfield, Barrow, Guffrey, Lowe, and Conway across the midfield. And I'm going to stick up front Delfonso and Rhodes if he's fit. If not, I'll stick Coyter in. 
And this team selection was not easy. I've had, uh, you know, uh, I had some concerns with my right back and the right side of midfield, as well as my defensive midfielder, which is, you know, it's it's good to have that competition in in the places like I mentioned earlier. But, you know, I was I was considering um, Jason Lowe at right back. I was considering uh, Akpan in 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 uh, central, you know, midfield as my defensive midfielder. And up front, I thought, you know, Koya could start. And Delfonso has been great off the bench. But you know, I think confidence is is buzzing with Delfonso. I think. Now that he got that dubious goal out of the way in the League Cup, now that it's been bagged as his official two goals and two his last two uh, appearances is, is not a bad stat. So let's hopefully we can uh, feed on that, get him in another one, and let's just kick on from there and uh, we'll see how we progress. Now Brighton is a completely different match to Gage because of, as of writing, they are top of the league. So our mentality should be more counter-attacking. So I've opted for a 4-5-1 approach uh, as I think this will be more better suited to that line matchup against uh, Brighton. So my lineup for that match will be a little bit different to the one uh, previously. It would be a 4-5-1 uh, and I will again stick Raya in goal. Uh, a defensive lineup consisting of Marshall once again, Hanley, Kipgall and Olsen. A five-man field with Barrow, Akpan, Guthrie, Lowe, Conway and Jordan Rhodes leading the line again if he's fit. If he's not fit, maybe Coita, D'Alfonso from the bench. But for these are tough matches, as are, as are every in the uh, unpredictable championship. So I'd like to see us take a minimum of four points to get us into the top half of the table and to kick on from there. Any other business? Okay, so I don't want the show to be a review preview show. So this section is a little off the wall for the next 11 weeks. I will be, well now, it's probably now for the next eight weeks, I'll be uh, breaking down my ultimate Blackburn Rovers dream team. In episode one, I started with my goalkeeper and I'll finish up in episode 11 with my second striker. Seeing as this is episode number three, we shall take a look at my first centre-back of my almighty Rovers. Already my ultimate dream team, we have Brad Friedel in goal and Bob Crompton at right back. Joining them at centre-back was our rock during our illustrious title-winning campaign in 1994-1995. I'm talking about the great Scott, Colin Hendry. Hendry, aka Braveheart, was originally signed by Rovers back in 1987, where he chalked up an impressive 22 goals in 100 appearances. For a defender, that ain't no, that ain't bad. That sort of form led to a move to Manchester City. He stayed there for just over two seasons before King Kenny came in with his revolution and brought him back to be the rocket at the centre of our defence. Then, the big jock stayed for seven more seasons, winning the Premier League being a major highlight. I recall the big fella giving his all during his second spell in a Rover shirt and I always felt safer when I saw his name on the team sheet. He left Rovers as a player to join Rangers in the Scottish Premier League. Uh, he hasn't had the greatest life since he hung up his boots, you know, with, with a lot of uh, off the field drama. However, he's still epic enough to make it into my Blackburn Rovers ultimate dream team. I welcome you, sir, Colin Hendry. Who are ya? Who are ya? Another portion of my any other business is Mystery Man. Each episode, I'll read out a short summary of a past rover and hope that you can guess who I'm on about. In case you missed last week's question and answer, or in case you missed last week's question, here is a quick recap and I'll give you the answer. This British-born attacking midfielder boasts a number of different clubs throughout his footballing journey, including Galatasaray, Olympiacos, Feyenoord and the mighty blue and white rovers. His most memorable moment in a rover shirt was his goal against Arsenal in the FA Cup, knocking out the big four club. This troublesome player has over 30 international caps and was last seen playing this game in Holland. Who am I? Well, I was Colin Kazim Richards. On to this week's Rover. I'm getting tricky now. We're getting to the, to, you know, to my sticky wickets. This French striker is one of those players who seem to excel when they left Ewood Park. Arriving from French giants Bordeaux, this player only managed five appearances in a Rover shirt without a single goal. After leaving the dizzy lights of Lancashire, he managed a uh, changing form, doing well both in France and in the Bundesliga with Hoffenheim. A number of folks have pointed the finger at him as being solely responsible for our relegation from the Premiership to the Championship. Who am I? Find out next episode who this illustrious Frenchman is. Striker. Check it out. That about, that about wraps up episode three. But before I go, I want to let you know that if you're watching on YouTube, you can click on the bottom right hand side of the screen to see what my PC, PlayStation 3 thinks will happen in this week's fixtures. You can keep up to date with Blackburn Rovers by clicking on the subscribe button. And if you want more information, I'm on Twitter and Facebook. So like me, follow me, whatever you want to do. Check it out. Details in the description. And uh, come on, you Rovers. Let's get results.